Hi everyone, it's Andrew Fazekas, the Night Sky Guy here, giving you tips on how to get the most out of the Geminid Meteor Shower. The Geminid Meteor Shower is an annual ritual for sky watchers occurring on the night of December 13th into the morning of December 14th. If clear skies prevail, the best views will be from the dark countrysides, far from bright city lights, but even suburbanites under bright lights should get to see at least some of the biggest and brightest meteors, one every five or six minutes or so. Historically, Geminids have really been overlooked by most simply because of its timing so close to the busy holiday season. And of course, for, in, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the frigid winter nights that really prevent us from spending too much time outdoors this time of the year. But that's beginning to change thanks to the rising intensity of the Geminid meteors over the past few decades. The Geminids really were first noticed back in 1862 when less than 20 shooting stars an hour were recorded. But since then, their numbers have skyrocketed to well over 100 shooting stars per hour in the last few years, especially on those nights where there's no moon in the sky. And the reason for the upswing? Astronomers believe that Earth is plowing deeper every year into an ancient stream of debris left behind by a mysterious five kilometer wide object that orbits the inner solar system. Now the sand-sized meteors all appear to be chips off of a bizarre asteroid-like object called 3200 Phaethon. Unlike other meteor showers that astronomers know come from material shed from melting icy comets as they pass close to the sun, the true identity of Geminid parent object has left scientists baffled. The object does not develop a cometary tail when it passes near the sun, but bits of it do break off during its journey past the sun, and when Earth passes through this debris, we experience the Geminid meteor shower. Discovered in 1983 by a NASA satellite, astronomers quickly matched Phaethon's year and a half orbit precisely with the Geminids, making it a prime candidate for the source of the meteors. The Geminids hit the atmosphere of Earth at incredible speeds of over 20 miles per second. And it creates long, beautiful arcs across the sky. Many of them last more than two seconds. Now, the Geminids really do favor the Northern Hemisphere. The point in the sky where all the shooting stars appear to be radiating out from is occupied by the constellation Gemini. That's where it gets its name from, the Geminids, from the Gemini constellation. Now, the radiate of the shower is really where you should be facing, and that's in the northeastern part of your sky. And the Gemini constellation, where all the shooting stars appear to come from, that rises above your local horizon around 9 p.m. local time in the east. And it's after that that you get to see a lot more shooting stars. So the later into the night, into the early morning hours, is traditionally when you'll see more shooting stars, just as your skies darken. Now for this year, sky watchers are gonna have to contend with a near full moon. It's actually a waning gibbous moon, and the full moon occurs two nights before the peak night of the Geminid meteor shower. So what this means is that the near full moon will be rising maybe an hour or two after your local sunset in the east. And guess where the moon will be located? Smack dab right in the middle of the constellation Gemini. It really is unfortunate that it's in the middle of that constellation where the radiant of all the showers coming from is occupied by the moon on exactly the peak night. However, sky watchers shouldn't dismay because you can still see plenty of shooting stars with the Geminids. The Geminids are known to produce upwards of 60 to 100 shooting stars an hour on an average year when there's no moon in the sky. But since there is a near full moon uh, right near the radiant of the shower this year in 2019, we are going to have to contend with that. And the best way is to 
face away from the moon. Make sure to keep your eyes dark adapted throughout your time that you're outside looking for shooting stars. So the best way is to turn your back to the moon. So since it's rising if in the east uh, after 9 p.m., I would turn my back to the moon, face towards the west, and that way you would maintain your dark adaptation for your eye vision, and you'll be able to see as many shooting stars as you can even though there's a lot of glare from the moon. While there's no need for telescopes or binoculars, since meteors can appear to race across any part of the sky, don't forget to lie back with a warm sleeping bag and some hot chocolate to enjoy the show. Now, how many shooting stars can we expect with a near full moon? Estimates are that you could see anywhere from 10 to 30 shooting stars per hour on the night of December 13th into the early morning hours of December 14th. Still a fantastic show and plenty of wishes to be made. Thanks so much for watching this episode. If you like my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video. Clear skies.